Extreme Anime Radio has had a lot of firsts since January of last year. January of 2020, we officially started a podcast. In the fall of 2020, we started broadcasting on Twitch. And now here, in the middle of February 2021, we're having our very first interview with a Guinness World Record holder. Joining me now on the audio realm is Matt Emblidge. Hello, Matt, and welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm sorry that uh, due to some um, bandwidth issues, we couldn't bring you on uh, video-wise, but could you tell all of our viewers and listeners what is the record that you have? Sure. It's uh, pretty simple. It is the largest single collection of merchandise related to the anime Cardcaptor Sakura and also Cardcaptor Sakura Clear Card. I have the record at 4,873 pieces. 4,873. Wow. Let me uh, take you back uh, before the record. When did your fascination with Cardcaptor Sakura all begin for you? Uh, that started all the way back in, I think if I have this date right, it's 2001 when the dub of the show Card Captors was airing on the Kids WB network. Uh. So that was my first exposure to it. And then I found the manga sometime also during that year. So, um, and then it just kind of blossomed after that, basically. Yeah, well, it's, um, I, wa I watched the show for the entire run uh, on Kids WB and they repeated it enough so that I could see it. Uh, and then a few years later, this was developing internet times, uh, I found fan sites that opened my eyes to the world of sub versus dub and mm. learned that there's a lot more of the series that didn't get aired uh, here in the States. So I tracked down DVDs, got myself the a, a set that I could watch, and that was how I experienced the whole series by about, I don't know, 2004-ish. A lot better than uh, watching it on WB, wouldn't you agree? Yes and no. I have an unpopular opinion here. Uh, I, I, of course consider Cardcaptor Sakura to be the superior product, but I unironically enjoy the Nelvana dub of Cardcaptors. Mm. So it is, uh, it is not, um, it is not well loved by the community. Uh, and I don't know if it's just purely nostalgia, but I have been going through the series recently. Uh, and it, it's hard at times, but I actually think it was a good product for its time. Okay. Um, so you watched uh, all versions of Cardcaptor Sakura, basically, and then started all of the collecting. About how long have you been collecting Cardcaptor Sakura memorabilia, do you think? Uh, officially, uh, 2001, I bought the, the Cloud Book in Toys R Us. Uh, oh, but wow. the collection, yeah, uh, the collection as it really is now started in 2006 when I, uh, I went to my first anime convention and found some merchandise there. So that was kind of the official start of collecting stuff for this series. Like I also had the manga, uh, but I didn't really count the manga as collection. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's just part of what you have. Um, but yeah, the, when it came to collecting merchandise, 2006-ish is about when I, uh, I really started. Okay. Um, and then when and why did you decide to pursue the uh, Guinness World Record for collecting specific memorabilia from this franchise uh so i had been i'd been collecting uh pretty regularly up until 2016 uh when the first record holder for this sophia pichiwa uh she claimed the record uh up until then i'd never really considered that idea i kind of knew that guinness occasionally had like records for largest star wars collection or star wars or largest simpsons collection i thought you had to be like a big name to get one of those, but she went and got one. And I thought, that's cool. I think I can beat her. <laughs> and at the time I, um, at the time we were about tied. I, I don't remember exactly what I had at the time, but hers was 1086. I think I was, I was in the ballpark plus or minus 200 items. I, I don't remember exactly what I had. Okay. So I decided I wanted to, I, I decided I wanted to beat her, but uh, I kind of forgot about it for 2017 that in 2018, I went to uh, Tokyo to go to the Sakura exhibition. Uh, it was it was this uh, uh, museum of uh, artwork and stuff uh, dedicated to the series. Uh, and 
in that exhibition was a uh, there was a there was a piece uh, written by Sophia. Like she got to have a little blurb written in there, and I thought that should be me. That should be my blurb. <laughs> uh, uh, so as soon as I set foot back uh, at the time I was living in Hawaii, um, so as soon as I uh, set down in Honolulu, I uh, I started cataloging everything because gosh darn it, I was going to get this record. <laughs> and then it took another two years. Wow. How, uh, how easy or difficult of a process was it to officially get certified? Did somebody from Guinness have to get back to you and officially verify everything that you had? So the way it works is that uh, from starting from square one, you first have to submit a request to Guinness and ask, uh, will you, uh, will you take this record? So for me, it was, for me, it was easy because the record already existed. So I could just ask them, Hey, I want to beat this record. And then the, they'll give you a, a go ahead. Yeah, you can do that. Then you have to submit the evidence. You can pay them to send an adjudicator to you, but that's really, really expensive. It's kind of more of a, you know, a big event or businesses kind of thing. Right. If you're uh, an individual like me, uh, you can uh, you can do it yourself with uh, some certified volunteers who uh, can uh, verify the authenticity and what you have is you know physically there it exists it is what you claim it it is so it's it's a little bit of an involved process but it's uh, it's quite doable. So I had a couple of questions. One comes from uh, Kesho Cho, who is actually one of the cosplayers of our mascot here on Extreme Anime Radio, Sarah Yoshida, and Kesho Cho wants to know. Uh, what your favorite uh, card captor Sakura memorabilia is? So my favorite item is technically not a single item. It is um, is my collection of uh, rubber charms uh, that, that they came, they became popular a few years ago. Mm. Uh, they're just they're, they're stamped or molded pieces of rubber on a keychain. Uh, there are, are a lot of them for card captor Sakura. I I don't know offhand. I think it's, I, I think my wall has 190 something of them. Wow. Uh, and that's not quite all of them that there are, but I'm, I'm very proud of those. I really like them as a product. So kind of that whole wall is my, uh, my favorite item. Nice. And then uh, also Neff Canuck, who is my co-host of the Extreme Anime Radio podcast. He was unable to join us for this recording, but he wanted to know, in contrast, what uh, merchandise in your collection was very difficult to track down? So I think the hardest thing for me to track down is a Bandai uh, Card Captor Sakura play phone. Uh, it's, it's shaped like the cell phone that she has in the series. I've only ever seen three of them, and I have the third one because the first two I... Uh, lost out on the uh, on the bidding for. Oh wow! Uh, so yeah, so I had that that one is not only the hardest one to find, but it was the hardest one for me to actually obtain because I had to, I basically had to actually fight people for it. I I don't often have to uh, struggle too much right. uh, in this process. I don't have a I don't have the most competition in the world, mm -hmm. uh, but that phone is special, uh, and I have one, and it works, and I'm quite happy with it. Now let me ask you, because this is extreme anime radio, so we focus more on anime aspects and whatnot. Um, if you could single out a favorite part of the Card Captor Sakura anime series, whether it be um, the initial run back um, when it first came out, or Clear Card series, or the movies, what would be um, maybe your favorite moment? Um, I'm going to steer away from Clear Card because unfortunately, Clear Card is. Uh, there's a lot of it that hasn't been uh, adapted to anime yet, that, right. but there's a, there's some great moments in the manga that I'm I'm really looking forward to for that season two. Which, if if, if anyone out there is waiting, I can't guarantee it because I don't work in the industry. But I'm like, it's it's gonna happen. Just just be patient. <laughs> there there will be a, there there's a lot of there's a lot of lack of hope that the second season will happen. It'll happen. But to, to your question, um, I think one of the most memorable, uh moments for me is uh is actually from the first episode i ever saw which was uh it, it's the second episode of the card captors run but it's uh i think it's episode uh 10 or 11 it's it's the sword card episode where uh okay. 
uh, she where it, it the the scene is where uh, Sakura Sakura's friend Rika has been uh, taken over by the spirit in the sword card, and Rika now wielding the sword is trying to uh, well basically murder Sakura with it, mm-hmm. uh, and that kind of established right then and there that this series was like okay this is this is a quote unquote girl show but also right. like there's some legitimate danger here. Uh, it, it's it's one of those kind of moments that's kind of always stuck out to me is like that it, it, it this is a show that's going to set itself as you know it can um, it's not defined by its genre it can uh, it can it can go places. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 a pretty good action scene too for for what they uh, for what they were working with. So yeah, that's one of my more memorable scenes. And who's your favorite character? Would it be Sakura herself, or do you have another character that you like? Um. It's hard to pick one. Uh, I kind of uh, like Sakura is great, but for me, and this probably makes sense considering what my record is for. But my favorite character is Tomoyo uh. Uh, because it's um, I, she she and I have that same aspect of like I'm I'm actually happy just sitting back and observing, um, and uh, I, I'm not. I, I want to. I want to believe I'm not quite as as obsessive, but then again, here I am as the, the Guinness World Record holder. So, <laughs> like, well, I'll let the uh, I'll let the the viewers decide if I'm as obsessive as she is. Uh, there, there is there are moments in Clear Card where I feel like you know Tomoyo is uh, dipping into the um, the crazy lady stereotypes mm-hmm. a little bit. So, I, I don't think I'm that far gone yet. Right. Well, uh, Matt Emlidge, last question for you. Now that you've secured this Guinness World Record, uh, what's next? Will you continue expanding your Cardcaptor Sakura collection, or maybe will you go for another world record? Well, the uh, the collection is actually still increasing anyway. It's actually uh, over 5,000 pieces now. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's just because I had a, a, a large collection of cards come in right after I submitted my evidence, so those didn't get to get counted. Uh, so I will continue to expand, but probably at a slower pace. Uh, it's largely because I'm running out of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel like it can get bigger, but that is my goal is just just continue collecting. Uh, I'll probably update the record at some point if, uh, if I need to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but as it is right now, I don't, uh, I don't collect anything else that would be... Uh, worthy of a collection or another uh, another uh, guinness world record uh i don't know what i'm going to do other than um I, I run a youtube channel the uh cc yamato where i right now i mostly just talk about the manga but i want to get back into doing um videos about the items i have i did a few very early videos about things that i had mm-hmm. uh because i i want the I, I want my collection to be a showcase i i I'm going to plug another thing, my Tumblr, the Card Captor Museum. Uh, I want it to actually be a museum, you know, that people can see. So that that's kind of the goal here is to allow people to see more of the stuff. So Matt Emblidge, who can also be reached on Twitter at uh, CCM underscore Yamato. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for joining us. And again, congratulations on your world record. Thank you. Thank you for having me.